is of course the fish goddess with her fins up above her head. That's so it could have sex with the fish people. And that's how this whole story rolled. So I began to come into an understanding that there was more to planet Earth than I thought. That there might just be an ancient relationship with extraterrestrials from a constellation or from the dog star Sirius. And that the Freemasons that were running our planet were worshipping this. And that they seemed to be mining the planet for this race of beings from Sirius. Uh, so I, I took this hypothesis and I started to roll with it. I, be, I, I learned that my dad was a worshipful master for the Berlin Lodge that Chase Flying Saucers and Project Blue Book was on Killer One Submarine with Jimmy Carter. Jimmy Carter did what? Uh, my father and Jimmy Carter were on Killer One together, the first uh, killer nuclear sub. And this is the type of things that you do when you're a Freemason. If you're a Freemason, then you're in the intelligence agency, you're, you're in the space agency, all the astronauts have been Masons. Uh, you go to, uh, you, you're, you're in the secret order, and therefore then you get to be the one that chases flying saucers, like my dad. So now I'm starting to take the puzzle a little bit more serious. You know, my dad's involved. I'm like, oh my God. And I did not know this as I'm tracking UFOs and ancient civilizations and everything else. I didn't know my dad was involved. And then as I start to talk about it, my dad's like, well, yeah, flying saucers are real. And I'm like, what are you talking about? And he's like, I was in Project Blue Book chasing flying saucers for the government. I'm like, all right. <laughs> no. Did he work with Heimlich? Yes. <laughs> yeah. uh, he's actually in a book called uh, Architects of the Underworld, mentions my dad. Uh, I don't know. So I find this stuff out, but he never tells me anything. But as you see, he was worshipful master. This is all their garb that they wear in the temple when they go and they do their secret rituals. So your leaders are going into these buildings, into these temples, and doing secret rituals. Uh, so I began to understand their ritual. I started to look deeper and deeper into this, and I realized that it was Kabbalism. And Kabbalism came from an ancient Hebrew mysticism that was based out of Egypt. And Kabbalism is the magic that Brittany practices and, and Madonna practices, and uh, you know Madonna's about to have another Kabbalist wedding, and uh, Demi Moore had a Kabbalist wedding with Ashton Kutcher. You know, there are, uh, Kabbalism is, is far more popular than most people would think. And it's actually Hebrew mysticism, so everything that you decipher in this magic has to go back to Hebrew. And so I started to decipher these ideas. And what I did is I, I started to watch Y2K. And in Y2K, they were, of course, talking about the big meltdown, the computer meltdown. And we're going to have to fix everything, right? And, of course, they charged $10 a line, and the, the DOD alone had 358 million lines of code to go through. So think about how much money the government made off of Y2K. Not only that, but they established Command Central. They built a deep underground military base to route all resources through in case of a terrorist attack or any uh, earth-shattering event, which didn't seem to come into play when 911 happened. Because even though Command Central was a deep underground military base they built for Y2K, the stock market was going to be routed through there as well, but for some reason after 9-11 they told us that the stock market was shut down for three days. I'm thinking another Rothschild coup? I don't know. But well, I wasn't curious, I wasn't too concerned, I wouldn't have minded at all if the entire system had shut down on <laughs> stroke of midnight on Y2K. That would have made my day. I'm ready for the end of this madness. Uh, but what I was concerned about was the headline that was in the USA Today. And that said, Muslims stopped the Freemasons from capping the Great Pyramid with gold. What? <laughs> what? So I began looking into this, and sure enough, and not only is it strange enough that the Freemasons were going to cap the Great Pyramid with gold with a, a giant gold cap held by a helicopter, while John Michael Jarre played the Twelve Dreams of the Sun, and they projected uh, the Eye of Horus onto the pyramid, but there was an entire ritual going on from one nation to the next all in honor to this god Horus. And I watched as this entire celebration went down, and what happened was, just prior to the capping of the Great Pyramid with gold, there was an Egyptian flight leaving out of Los Angeles. And it was Egyptian Flight 990, but it was also known as Thothmosis III, who some believe is Moses. Uh, it had the eye of Horus on the, on the jet, and the jet decided to pull over and stop at an American military base. I think it was Patterson or Edwards. I always lose those two because they're both involved with extraterrestrials. So this airliner, which is a foreign airliner, landed at a military base, which has never happened before, never happened again. 
And they picked up 33 Egyptian military and a head scientist of Jet Propulsion's laboratories, and they took off for New York to then take off to the Giza Plateau. And all of a sudden, this plane took a sudden nosedive into the ocean on its way to the Giza Plateau. The pilot called out a prayer as it went down. It seems that they have remote control over our jet liners, because if you remember Paul Wellstone suddenly flying into a mountain after going against the Patriot Act, uh, you get an idea of how they can do these things. But this was the first one. This was the first time this had happened, and the first one that we had noticed. And it was so symbolic, and it also involved the capping of the Great Pyramid of Gold with these high scientists with Jet Propulsion's laboratory. And when the pilot called out his Muslim prayer and crashed into the ocean, then they called it pilot suicide, because they weren't ready for the programming of terrorism yet. So it, it was just strictly classified as pilot suicide. Hmm, don't know what happened. But next thing you know, they canceled the Great Pyramid capping. But you can watch the entire Y2K ritual in this film because I was uh, recording it at the time. Everybody thought I'd be in a deep underground bunker since I suggested that the FEMA and devotees said you should have three days of food. Uh, everybody thought I was a nut. But I filmed it and I recorded the whole event uh, and the entire ritual is in here showing you how all of the nations across the world coming into America, they ignited the, the Eiffel Tower, which is a Masonic phallus. They ignited the... Uh, uh, Washington Monument, which was shown to have the Dogon symbols uh, on it, and then uh, Bill Clinton came out and said it is a rising sun, and these are all code within their Atlantean Hebrew Egyptian rituals that they're performing. So I took this knowledge and I want to share this with you because I want you to see how I came to my ideas, understandings, because I keep making these predictions and I keep getting them right. And I don't know why, I don't know what's going down, but this is what keeps happening. So, after Y2K, when I was watching Bill Clinton prior to Y2K with the Monica Lewinsky scandal, and I said, oh, what, why are they doing this, okay? They're bringing our president out in front of everyone and making him turn purple by bringing up cigars being inserted into his <laughs> secretary, right? And he's just like, oh, can I have another bathroom break, you know? Poor guy, right? But I knew it was a plan. I knew it was psychological warfare. This was their game plan to start to discredit and disgruntle the Americans. The whole idea is to defeat your heart before they can defeat you in warfare. So as I'm watching this, I know that all the prior... I know JFK was together with Marilyn Monroe, who happens to be a cousin of George Bush. I know that uh, you know the other presidents have all had their mistresses, and I know that they don't promote this, but unless they had a reason. So my reasoning was that these men were now lowering our ideal of the man, the president. So they were going to take Bill Clinton down, and that, in that way, they had put a man of the people, the saxophone player, David Letterman loving man of the people, into office and then crushed him for an idea that most people would say, yeah, so what? Okay, but this was to defeat your heart. They're preparing you for World War III. So I'm knowing this. I'm saying, okay, this is what's going on. So what's the next step in the process? What would they do? And I look and I say, okay, well, obviously, if you want to defeat their hearts, the next thing to do is to force a president into office. The next thing you would want to do is to, you know, take the system down so that no one believes in the system anymore. So I said, all right, they're going to force a president into office. And then I hear the call of this W. I knew the meaning of W. I had just recently found the meaning of W because I was trying to understand corporate logos. I had been through all the gas stations. I understood the pentagram of Texaco, the shell of shell, as symbols of Venus or Lucifer. I knew that uh, Target's sun sign was a sexual symbol. I knew that Walmart's pentagram were all connected. But what did Philip 66 mean? I didn't get that. But very simply, I just went to a magician's dictionary, opened it up, and said, what's number 66 mean? And it's the number of the quillipoth in magic, the number of the dark side of magic. It was the number of evil. And in Hebrew, V is 6. And so, very quickly, I transliterated 66 into VV. And this totally opened up a whole new ball of worms, because next time, <laughs> bag of worms, or uh, can of worms, or any of that, because all of a sudden I'm looking at Hitler's <coughs> cars, the Volkswagen. The Volkswagen was crafted for Hitler's warfare. And I'm realizing that that's not V and W, that's two Vs interlaced. Well, when you take 6 and 6, and you put 6 and 6 together and cross them, you get 666. So all of a sudden, Volkswagen means 666. And then I happened to notice that the Philips logo actually had 6 points on its crest. Another coded 666. 
So as I saw this coming down the pike and I heard the story of this W, I said, he's going to be the one. They're going to force W into office because he's the magic. He's the dark one. He's the evil one that's going to bring down this whole idea of America. <laughs> I was right. <laughs> and they did force him into office just as I had expected. Um, so at this point, I'm like, oh, God, what do I know? You know, what do I know? All throughout the Clinton era, we were watching this thing known as the Homeland Security Act. And that's what we called it. Uh, they were trying to create a homeland security. 